welcome back. This is part two of week six of basic military training. These are all opinions of me and not of the Air Force. To see the beginning of this video, just watch the one previous to this. That was all on B specifically. And part two is on EOC and blood donations. So let's get right into it. So this video is gonna start off on Friday. Friday, um, we were back in the dorm, of course. And like I said in previous videos, normally I'm naturally like waking up before Reveille. But not today, I was so knocked out, so tired, so I woke up to Reveille. And we we were just so beat that day. We were just so worn out and all of that, so we were extra tired. And we still had PT to go to. Today was cardio training, so cardio integral training CIT days. We did that, chow, showers, made the beds, dust sounds, details, you know, the whole drill. And then by about, I think it was nine o'clock, we had our EOCs. So we took our EOC in the classroom. So we would march to the classrooms or whatever. And we were not allowed to bring anything except um, our iPad and our cat card. Couldn't bring our water bottle, had to leave 341s and anything like that. We had to leave everything else in our backpacks in our dorms. So the original plan was to take the EOC on the iPads. They were trying to test that out. There was a spot for them to have the test set up on it, but with all the technical difficulties, a lot of people were not able to connect to the Wi-Fi in the classroom, so they just defaulted to taking a paper test, which I kind of preferred anyways. So we took a paper test with the Scantron and all that. Any, um, background noise, I was editing this video and I decided to cut out the part where I talked about um, every testable topic. It's not really test compromised, but I just decided to leave it out. You guys can actually find that information in your iPad or your book. You will be given um, a whole section that tells you all the chapters that will be on the test. It's about 30 chapters. You are given, you know, six weeks to study, so use that time wisely. Ask questions, pay attention in class, take notes, make flashcards, study, of course, like I said. It's a 100-question test, and to fail, you have to get below a 70. So a 70 is passing, anything above that is great if you want to be eligible for honor grad you do need a minimum of a 90 though all i have to say is when you get that free time to study throughout the weeks take that opportunity you're going to get out of your test what you put in and that's honestly just a life lesson you're going to get it what you put out you're going that's going to happen um before basic when it comes to starting your process that's going to happen during basic during tech school during operational and even outside of your military life what you put in is what you're going to get out of it so i remember i was super tired this day but we took that test and then you're gonna go over all the questions. I remember like trying not to fall asleep, waiting on everyone else to finish their tests. But they're gonna go over the, the questions and they're gonna go over the correct answer. They're not allowed to say the wrong answers or like anything else. You can ask questions if you need to. So as they're doing that, we're all trying to like count to see how many we got wrong, if you can like remember in your head or whatever. We found out our test scores later that day, our MTIs pulled us individually and told us our scores. We actually only had one person fail in the whole stairwell. So if you fail the EOC, you do have another chance to take it. You might have two chances to retake it, but no one's ever needed that third chance. So that person did end up passing the second time. So overall we didn't have anybody get recycled because of an eoc test after all of that we had our town pass brief because obviously the next week is seventh week and that is graduation and on one of the days you do get a town pass then we had 35 minute showers rla yeah i wrote down that my knees were so messed up I, my knees were so stiff they were hurting like walking up all the stairs being a beast all week like at this point your body is just like trying to tap out but keep keep going just put that some tiger bomb on your knees and it's gonna get you through your day and then um saturday so this was our last saturday as trainees our last weekend at bmt we were so excited about that we had 0 5 30 wake up and we had so out of the four flights in our stairwell we had two of them scheduled to do um blood donations that day i think the other flights were scheduled the friday we got back from beast or excuse me, the Thursday we got back from Beast. So I don't really think a lot of people ended up doing that because we're all just like tired and stuff. But the rest of us did it on the Saturday. Either they were scheduled that Thursday or that Friday. I think Friday makes more sense, but we were scheduled on Saturday. Everyone else did their blood donations in like a blood, I'm gonna call it a blood mobile. And like the big vans that um, come to you, like the mobile blood donation vehicles. They had that parked right outside of our squadron, but um, for us on Saturday, that um, 
that vehicle was no longer out there so we went outside and waited i'm getting ahead of myself before that even happened everyone else went to pt and we did not we stayed behind did the dust sounds for everyone who was at pt and then we went to chow at 0 6 30 and then we formed up at the bus stop which is like right by the squad and we formed up and waited for the bus to come get us um our mti was there talking with us and supervising us in the so yeah once we got off the bus and we were at the blood donation building we were lined up and there's different lines based off of your blood type so we did that and waited to get called inside and we were told to sit down in a very specific order in the blood or in the classroom just to ensure like the blood types didn't get mixed up or anything and they just gave us a brief on how the process is going to go what to expect how they want everything to flow as smoothly as possible and so we had a lot of downtime because they would go in order of like front to back within the classroom and i was towards the front they started in the back first so you see how that went they actually ended up playing spider-man so they ended up playing a movie for us in there and then when it was your turn to go out you're gonna go and you're gonna do some computer questions first just to get like your information in the system and there was a master sergeant who was um doing that and she was i just remember her being like really nice she was talking to me about the music that was playing because they do have music playing on the speakers and it's pretty it's like good music so i was actually like you know it's always exciting to hear music so she was talking to me about the music and all that and it's just a really nice conversation with her also you do not have to use reporting statements in the building because they're like, if there's an emergency, we don't need y'all using your last breath on that reporting statement, just talk to us. He's like, we don't have time for that. So we did not have to use reporting statements inside the building. After the computer questions, we went into another area of the building and that's where the, we did the triage, show your vitals, finger prick, all of that. And then you were told to sit in a specific spot and that's obviously, she's gonna clean it, put the needle in, you got like a red ball to squeeze gonna take a pint of blood out and then when you're done they have escorts I mean, it's just other trainees female to female male to male and they're, they're gonna grab the back of your shirt so they're gonna take it and like grab it like this like really tight they're gonna grab it and they're gonna walk behind you and escort you back to that classroom and they have to hold you the entire way my guess was so for in case you passed out you don't just fall I don't really know we got some treats that day we got his soda or like brisk tea and then we got ice cream we got ice cream and they had like caramel and chocolate drizzle and then they had we could get three cookies so it could either be like oreos or like chips ahoy so we were pretty excited and haven't had dessert in forever and especially hadn't had ice cream I love ice cream so definitely killed that they didn't give us a lot though they were like no you guys can't have like too much because your body hasn't had it in such a long time and normally when people like overindulge like that they start to get sick and throw up and we can't be having all that we got just enough to satisfy to be honest and that was fine by me i wasn't gonna be greedy thank you appreciate it so then i waited on my wingman and when she was done we just went outside I sat at the picnic tables and waited for the bus to come pick us up again. And mind you, that picnic table, that table was old. It had like, we we're reading all the writing on it. And it said like 1997, 1998, flight 010. So, and mind you, we're flight 434. So we we're like, dang, like flight 10, that's crazy. So hey, if you happen to have been in that flight, say hey or whatever, but that's crazy. We were like, nobody switched up this table, whatever. It was just cool to see like everyone's writing and the little comments up there. Then after we got back, we changed into our OCPs. So yes, doing blood donations, you are in your PT gear, by the way. And also I did bring up water monitors in a previous video because now we have dishes, which now means that water bottles are not allowed in the defect. Originally before we had them, you had to bring your water bottle in there. But now they're like not allowed. So you had to like line up your water bottles outside under the atrium and then walk into the defect. Just kind of like your backpacks aren't allowed inside either. You always line your backpacks outside um, and then go inside the defect. After that, we got a 20 minute phone call and that was our last phone call. So graduation, there's really no point in giving us another phone call. We're literally gonna see them in like four days. It was so exciting. So we're just, um, Saying our last minute highs and goodbyes. See you soon. And then also we were given our ribbons. A couple ribbons, but um, we got our marksman ribbons. Also, if you made marksman abbeys. Yeah, like me. And I was really excited. We had like, I think it was three girls in our dorm that made marksman. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and then you know the basic showers, dust downs, details, protein bars, evening brief, lights out, like all of that. 
followed the rest of the night and yeah that was the rest of our that was week six the last week before graduation uh that just like made everything like fall into place once you took that eoc and you're like now i'm done of course you can still get in trouble don't start acting like you're not in basic training because you still are anything can happen people have gotten recycled the day of graduation day before graduation not in my squadron but just in general so don't get too comfortable but hey definitely feel proud of yourself this is my shortest video yet but i just i didn't know how long it was going to take me to add on to that other video and it was just going to be way too long so yeah thank you guys for watching of course comment like subscribe turn on your post notifications ask any questions that you got my next video is going to be week seven video and then i'm going to break down this mre for you guys and then we'll go on to some other videos that i have planned for y'all which i'm really excited to share with you soon so yeah i hope you guys have a great day and i will see you on the next video bye